TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Multiple Syrian and Iranian targets were struck overnight in Syria in an aerial bombardment Damascus quickly attributed responsibility for on Jerusalem. Defense Minister Benny Gantz concludes a series of comprehensive security assessments in all that relates to the situation vis-à-vis -vis the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken confirms that hundreds of sanctions on Iran will remain in place. Multiple targets in central and southern Syria were subject to aerial bombardments late last night, highly sophisticated strikes which Damascus officials were quick to attribute responsibility for to the Israeli Air Force. At approximately 30 minutes after 11 p.m., unidentified aircraft launched multiple salvos from the direction of Lebanese airspace, striking a scientific research center in Syria's Homs Governorate, alongside multiple military posts and warehouses believed to store precision-guided munitions south of the city of Homs. During the aerial strike, Syria's aerial defense array attempted to intercept the incoming projectiles, as well as the unidentified aircraft which launched the missiles. Consequently, during the early hours of this morning, a subsequent aerial strike ensued, reportedly destroying a number of Syria's surface-to-air batteries from which the interceptors were launched toward the attacking aircraft. According to local reports, significant material damage was caused to multiple targets said to belong to Iranian proxy militias in last night's aerial attack, and at least 10 Syrian operatives were killed. However, it is important to highlight that TV7 could not immediately corroborate these reports. Separately, the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm nor deny its responsibility in response to TV7's request for comment. Turning to southern Israel, where Defense Minister Benny Gantz concluded a comprehensive security assessment in all that relates to the situation vis-à-vis -vis the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. אני מסיים סדרת דיונים בפיקוד הדרום עם הרמטכ"ל ומפקד הפיקוד בעקבות מבצע שומר החומות ועל רקע ההחלטה שלנו לעצב מדיניות חדשה נוכח האתגרים שלפתחנו. בשומר החומות הגענו להישגים חסרי תקדים בעוצמתם, בדיוק ובהגנה על העורף. גם היום צה"ל בהובלת הרמטכ"ל נערך עם בנק מטרות ושיטות פעולה חדשות שיעבירו את מרכז הכובד בלחימה לתוך השטח העזתי. לצד ההישגים המבצעים אנחנו רק בראשית הדרך מבחינת ההישגים המדיניים הנדרשים Minister Gantz, who is set to lead Israel's defense establishment under the new incoming government, which is scheduled to be sworn in next week on Sunday, June 13th, sees the opportunity to reaffirm his pledge to persistently safeguard the Jewish state, irrespective of political considerations. It is worth mentioning, according to domestic Israeli reports citing a Hamas official, that Egyptian negotiators have confirmed that Israel will allow funds to be remotely transferred to Gaza by this weekend or next week at the latest, earmarked for the basic humanitarian needs of the Palestinian residents of the Palestinian enclave. This report comes at a time when both Israeli and Hamas delegations are intermittently holding talks with their Egyptian counterparts in Cairo as part of U.S.-backed efforts brokered by Egypt to try and initiate a leveraged arrangement that will guarantee sustainable truce for a long period of time. All the while on the Gaza Strip, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, an offshoot of the PLFP, which identifies itself as a Palestinian Marxist-Leninist organization headquartered in Syria, held a parade in the Hamas-controlled territory to commemorate its participation in the latest round of hostilities directed at Israel. It is interesting to know that while this Marxist militant group is relatively small in comparison, the Islamist Hamas organization has utilized its operatives repeatedly, therefore granting its members special status despite its secular nature. Turning to Romania, where Israeli President Reuven Rivlin is currently on a second of a three-day visit to the Balkan state, 
upon the invitation of his Romanian counterpart to attend a business conference aimed at attracting foreign investments. Out of the refer to conference, President Rivlin seized the opportunity during a meeting with Romanian Prime Minister Florin Kitsu to thank Bucharest for its unwavering support for the peace and security of Jerusalem, including during the recent conflagration between Israel and the Islamist organizations in the Gaza Strip. Israel appreciates very much uh, the understanding and the support that you are showing towards our state, Israel. Once uh, we are fighting in order to protect our citizens, uh, something which is not only the right, it is the duty of every government and every state to do so. Prime Minister Kitsu, for his part, praised a strong Israeli-Romanian alliance and voiced hope that Bucharest, under its new government, will be able to bolster its economy. Uh, you have, we have a strong alliance with you, a very uh, strong partner of Romania in the region, uh, a trustworthy partner, and we appreciate that. Uh, but I think we have so much to do for the future in terms of economics. Romania is now um, going in the right direction with a new government that's implementing reforms. And this is the government that will implement reforms, but also the government that will fight for foreign investment and will allow foreign investment to uh, come to Romania. Turning to the United States, where U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken briefed the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, during which he underscored that the Biden administration intends to maintain hundreds of sanctions imposed on the Islamic Republic of Iran to deal with the multiplicity of Tehran's malign actions in a whole series of areas. Will you commit today that the administration will not provide sanctions relief including through waivers or general licenses that directly or indirectly benefits the Central Bank of Iran or the National Iranian Oil Company unless or until the Treasury Department determines that these entities are no longer connected to the IRGC or Iran's terrorism financing activities? Um. Senators, you know we're uh, engaged in indirect uh, conversations with Iran about the possibility of a mutual return to compliance with the nuclear agreement, the so-called JCPOA. Um, and uh, we, we, we don't know uh, at this stage whether uh, Iran is uh, willing uh, and, and able to do what it would need to do to come back uh, into compliance. So we'll, we'll see if that actually um, uh, materializes. Were that to happen, um, we uh, would, uh, our responsibility would be uh, to uh, lift sanctions inconsistent with the JCPOA, but uh, to resolutely maintain uh, sanctions that are consistent with it uh, to deal with uh, the multiplicity of Iran's uh, malign actions in, in a whole series of areas. Uh, and, and I would anticipate that in the, even in the event of a return to, uh, uh, to compliance with the JCPOA, uh, hundreds uh, of sanctions would remain in place, including uh, sanctions imposed by the Trump administration. If they are uh, not inconsistent with the JCPOA, uh, they will remain unless and until Iran's behavior uh, changes. Meanwhile in Tehran, presidential candidates hoping to draw interest from ordinary Iranian citizens held a televised debate last night with the main topic of discussion focusing on the regime's efforts to lift Western sanctions on the Islamic Republic. مواضع جمهوری اسلامی ایران مواضع درستی است بایستی با قوت در مذاکرات حاضر بشیم در جهت اینکه برجام رو زنده بکنیم و اون حقوقی که در برجام بوده است رو دوباره مردم ایران برگردونیم البته بایستی همه امکانات کشور و همه تصمیران کشور در همه قوا و در همه نهادها همکاری بکنند که برجام و این مذاکرات در این سری به نتیجه برسه هر دولتی کار رو به دست بگیرد یکی از وظایف مهمش رفع تحریم های ظالمان است در این جهت هم هیچ تردیدی نباید کرد باید با همه وجود دنبال کرد که این تحریم های ظالمانی رفع بشه اما در کنار این قضیه باید خونساسازی تحریم ها هم در دستور کار عملی قرار بگیره اقتصادمون هم شرطی نکنیم بند نکنیم به این مسائل تلاش بشه بر اینکه اقتصاد روپای خود بیسته تکانه ها در او تاثیر نکنه 
نه کرونا تاثیر کنه نه سیل نه زلزله نه تحریم و نه هیچی اینم در کنارشه یعنی رفع تحریم ها حتما در دستور کار خواهد بود The latter candidate Ayatollah Ibrahim Raisi is expected to win the upcoming Iranian ballot by all accounts unless Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei decides otherwise Turning to Lebanon, where Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah made a televised address to his followers, during which he rejected claims that his health was failing him, declaring instead that he hopes to soon pray at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. Separately, in the midst of Lebanon's failing economy and the Beirut leadership's apparent refusal to engage in meaningful reform, the Iranian proxy leader sought to convince his rivals that there is another way forward. هلا لبنان يقبل يعوق بتمشي بواخر البنزين والمازوت من ايران وبتجي على لبنان. وقد ما بدكم مازوت وبنزين وبالليره اللبنانيه وما في داعي مصرف لبنان يقول ما عندي دولار وبدي دق بالاحتياط الالزامي. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Lebanon once again in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.